with the girls' soccer team, Cliff Freeland, who's the coach. We got Emma Washburn and, and, and Ariane Lenarski. And girls, thank you for coming. And Cliff, good seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. So, great season this year. Tell us a little about what you, what you guys accomplished this year. Well, uh, the season started out um, a little slow. We had some weather that was hard to deal with. Uh, we did a lot of practices indoors, which was tough when I didn't, wasn't very familiar with a lot of the girls. Uh, we pushed through. Uh, we had a lot of injuries early, which made it very difficult. At one point, we had seven of our regulars that were out for wow. multiple games. Uh, but it was a learning experience for me, I think, as much as it was for the girls, uh, getting to know all the players, their strengths, their weaknesses. But uh, it was fun. It was fun along the way. You guys did a really good job in the gold this year, finishing second. Yes. And, and it, that's, I mean, you guys had a good season, uh, number, good years, I think, for the, for the girls' soccer team here for a couple of years in a row. What were your kind of your goals as you came in, Cliff, as you started? Well, my goal was to win the league. Okay. Um, we finished second, which I was very proud of us for, for finishing second, like I said, because of the way the season uh, took place. Uh, and our goal was to, by the end of the season, to finish top two so we could move up to the blue next year, which we are when we went up to the blue. Excellent, excellent. And then you also won districts. Tell us a little, take us through that district journey because that, that was quite, a, quite an accomplishment. You know, we, we talked at the beginning of the year about our goals, and, you know, our goal was we wanted to make a run. We called it a run. Sure. And we came out against Marysville, and played very well, 3 up and shut out. Croslex, I told them I wanted the game to be over in the first half. We were close. It was 7 nothing at halftime. We scored early in the second half, won that 8-0. Uh, Clio plays in a very tough league in the district final. Great team. Uh, we came out on fire really to start the game, got two quick ones, and then just kind of hung in there, played some good defense, and walked away with a district title. And that's kind of odd because we don't really see Clio in any districts in any sport. Uh, How did you prepare for that game? Uh, the preparation was just talking to a couple of their coaches that were familiar with a few of their players. We really knew nothing about them, what style of soccer they played. We just knew they had a couple fast players is all we were told and pre prepared for those two players. So you mentioned and, and you've been a, a, a travel soccer coach for a long, long time. This is your first year as a, as a varsity coach at the high school. What were some of the challenges that you kind of faced doing that? Well. I've never coached anyone that was older than 14. So All right. <laughs> when I walked into the room to get introduced and there was 30 girls sitting in a classroom, it was a little intimidating, I'll be honest with you. Um, the biggest thing was getting to know all of them, you know, their strengths, their weaknesses, uh, getting to know what the team strengths were, you know, and how we were going to play as a team. And uh, I would say that was the hardest thing was to figure out the style of play we were going to use. Okay. And do you have a particular philosophy or approach to soccer? There's countless formations and, and ways of going about things. What did you start with? I'm a real possession guy. I okay. like to control the game. I like to call what they play from the back. I like to start with our keeper, play through our defense, and work our way up the field. Um, just love a possession game. And they'll tell you, you know, many a times in practice we would play possession type drills for you know most of practice and it, a lot of it is working on one two touch delivering the ball and a fast movement of play okay and what about the conditioning aspect of it if people maybe aren't as familiar with soccer played on a very large field and there's just a lot of running how'd you get them ready for that i'm not i don't know that we were ready <laughs> okay uh, i was i got the job on march 9th and conditioning started march 1st uh, these two along with some of the other leaders on the team were doing conditioning on their own right at the school uh, so conditioning was probably, I would say, our biggest challenge uh, because we played the first two games, only practiced outside, I think, once, uh, and then went on spring break. So conditioning probably didn't catch up with us until probably just about districts, to be honest with you. Okay. So in, in East China, is kind of unique in that you play on a, on a turf field. Is that make it, and I'm going to ask you girls this later on, but does that make it different from a coaching perspective? I mean, sir, you can obviously have a lot of clean passes, but from your perspective, is it hard moving back and forth between a, um, a, a turf field and a grass field? It is, because a lot of the players mentally think it's much harder on grass than okay. it is on turf. Uh, I would say if you ask me what we play better on, we play better on turf. We're a quick team. Okay. We like to play things fast, very quick with the ball. And when you get on a grass field uh, that, let's say, wasn't mowed that day, yes, exactly. it slows the game down considerably. And it's, it can be more frustrating. Okay. And it, just from, a, um, I, I guess, from, from your uh, taking over from a, 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 you know, a previous coach, did you try to change a lot of things, or did you kind of have to go with what was there already? Uh, and I'm sure the, these two will chirp in on this a little bit later, but I did try to change a lot of things. I am a real big believer in the strength of your team. I, I, I mean, you're as good as your weakest player. Sure. Uh, I wanted them to buy into that, and I pushed it very hard at tryouts in the beginning of the season uh, that we were a team, team first, no individuals, 
And to be honest with you, for having for a lot of them having three different coaches in their careers, all of them bought in from day one. So it wasn't that hard to implement it at all. That's interesting because that segue to the next question I was going to ask was, was there a buy-in period? You know, as, as a new coach, you mentioned coming in, meeting the girls in the classroom, and was, it, was there a period? And did you, what point did you figure or kind of see that they had really bought into the program? I'm going to be honest with you. The second day of tryouts, I felt like they had bought in. Really? I really did. Uh, I'm a very vocal leader yep. um, in, a, in a good way, I like yep. to think, um, and kind of very loud at times in a good way <laughs> and I always had their attention from day one none of them ever didn't pay attention like if I said something they all did it and I did it quickly and in a hurry and there was never any any feedback in a bad way it was awesome it was a great experience oh, that's terrific well girls let's 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 talk about a little bit about your experience with it and, and maybe starting with you Aaron tell me how did you get started in soccer did you, anybody in your family play yeah, a few of my cousins played when I was younger, so I kind of got into it when I was pretty young. I was probably like eight years old when I started playing, and I played at AYSO. Okay. For a while. Did you play a lot of travel as well, or no, mainly stick with I AYSO? I played volleyball too. Okay. So I was doing that in the fall and in the summer sometimes, so I didn't really play as much travel. No. Emma, how about you? What, what's your background? Um, my older sister played soccer for a long time, so I started out playing AYSO, and then I turned it into travel for a okay. long time. And so, what do you like about soccer, Arian? Um, I like how you're always moving on the field. It's a team sport, so you get closer with your team and have to work together. How about you, Emma? What, what about you? I like being active all the time, and it's running for a reason, so. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Arianne, you're a, uh, as I understand it, you're a defender? Yes. And tell us a little bit about what that position entails and, and how you go about doing it. Um, well, it means that like you have to pay attention to the forwards on the other team and where you should be compared to them. Like they're faster, you need to have more space between you and them. And um, it's working together a lot with the four defenders back there, probably more than anywhere on the field so that we have no holes for people to get through. How do you communicate? Do you basically just yelling to your teammates? Yeah, I've um, worked together with most of the girls on our defense except for maybe one for a few years now. So okay. we get along really well. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> As a defender, you're, you're basically marking the, the opponent's uh, offensive players. What's a toughest or a tougher offensive player for you to control? A small, quick player or a big, strong one? A faster one. Okay. Definitely. Why is that? Because uh, you have to, like I said, give them more space. And if they're bigger, it usually, or like stronger, it usually means they're like, I don't know, less fast. So it's easier to catch up to them if they get a breakaway. Yeah. And it's less nerve wracking if they get a breakaway. <laughs> <laughs> How physical is it as a defender? Definitely very physical. What kind of things do you have to do? Like, um, well, you're first to the ball a lot, so you have to, especially because I play outside wing, so I have to move forward a lot to come to the ball, so before the other team gets it. So, right. Yeah. So Emma, you're mid. Yeah. And, and, and basically that's kind of defined as running forever type of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your experience here. How do you, how do you prepare yourself for a game? Um, we just kind of do the same thing before every single game, warm-ups. And that helps me prepare a lot, stretching, just kind of getting my mind ready for, for the game. <laughs> what are your strengths as a midfielder? Um, passing. I'm, I like to do passing through balls. <laughs> now, do you come up and, and, and play on the offense? Do you ever get to shoot at the goal at all, or are you um, mainly in the defensive side? I'm more a defensive player. That's just kind of how my mind has been ever since I was younger. Okay. So, again, for you, same type of thing. When you're guarding someone, are you better off with a quick player or a big, strong one? Better off with a bigger, stronger one. Okay. So let, let's, let's talk about the team. And, and, and from your perspective, what were the things that really made you guys so successful to your Emma, what about you? What do you think? We were very well put together as a team. And we communicate, communicated together very well. So that helped us out a lot. Now, uh, uh, Arian, did, I, I understand there were a lot of shutouts this year. Is that, is yes. that the case? So what was it about the defense that kept the other team from scoring? Um, well, the first part of the year we did a flat four, so we didn't have a sweeper, which was new for us because the last few years we played with a sweeper. So, um, and maybe just explain what a sweeper is. A or? sweeper plays the back of the defense, last person before the keeper. And she's responsible for yeah. basically keeping any ball away from the yeah, keeper, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, it was a little harder without a sweeper, I will admit. Um, but we, we just communicated very well. And then once we did have our sweeper come in, then it made it – it made it easier to have someone in the back because she kind of controls the field in a way. Right. So you're both pretty tall girls. How, how big is heading the ball in girls' soccer? There's, there's been some controversy <laughs> about that. How do you guys play with that? 
Um, I'm not the biggest fan of heading the ball. Okay. <laughs> because it, I'm not very good at it, but when the opportunity is needed, I will. Okay. So. Marianne, what about you? I like to use my body more than my head. I will use my head occasionally, but not the most. <laughs> so, um, you guys are the, the senior captains on the team. What are some of the things that you had to do to help out with the younger girls? Arian? A lot of younger girls are uncomfortable when they're first starting. Sure. We had a lot of girls who had never played soccer before at tryouts. So just making them feel comfortable and welcome for the first few days of tryouts, I think, helped a lot. And what kind of things do you do to make them comfortable? Yeah, like Arianne said, just kind of making them feel like they're part of the family and showing them how it's done. Okay. Now, I'm always interested. You guys are, again, seniors. You've graduated. Uh, Arianne, Think about yourself as a freshman and now with the season that just passed. How have you changed? What have, what have you really done differently during that period? Um, freshman year, I played on offense. And oh, then, really? Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much the change. <laughs> yeah. And then sophomore year, I went to um, defense and I played since then. So it's been a huge change, definitely. Uh -huh. and what, do you like the defense better? And if so, why? I do like defense better. I, I feel... Um, I don't know. I, li I liked it better just because I'm, I, I'm a part of a lot of plays, for sure. 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 Yeah. Emma, same question for you. What have you changed from when you were freshman to now? Um, I have become a lot more confident on the ball than I, ha than I was freshman year and a lot more confident moving without the ball. So maybe explain what on the ball means. Um, like my skill sets and everything. Dribbling yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and being able to control the ball and, and passing and so on. Yes. Okay, so um, I also like to ask, and, and I, I think because uh, high school sports, especially uh, girls who are playing multiple score, sports and so on, there's a lot of things that, that, that really rub off that aren't just on the field. So, Arianne, what are the things you think that soccer's helped you be a better student, for example, uh, over the last four years? Well, uh, it definitely works on your communication skills and your skills with working with other people. So I feel like I've become a better leader over the years, even in a school setting, whether it's a project or on the field. Emma, what about you? What do you think, how has soccer helped you? Um, soccer has helped me through time management, and like Arianne said, a leader, I feel more like I'm in, I can lead better. I, I always wonder about that with time management because, I, you know, <laughs> it's a pretty full life. How do you make time for everything you have to do as well as being a, a soccer player, in this case, all the way through districts, which just ended about a week and a half ago or so? Yep. How do you do that, Emma? Um, I kind of just try to do my homework first, and okay. then soccer. If I have any extra homework left, I do that. Okay. And I, I, we were talking about this before, but the, so you got two captains here. Normally, one's the cheerleader and one's the kind of disciplinarian. So which is which with you two? Uh, Arianne? Well, I feel like we didn't really have a discipline. I was the but she was the one more mean, I guess. So, so she was the nicer one. The nicer one. So you, you're the ones telling the, the other girls to pick it up a little bit. No Especially in the game. Yeah. Oh, really? In the game, too? Uh, yeah. That's neat. So um, uh, also in the game, can you tell when Coach is a little bit upset? How, do you how, do you, how can you tell when that's happening? He's walking around a yeah, lot, like pacing. up and down the field. When he paces, you know, yeah. something's not good. <laughs> Or he says, I'm going to lose my mind. He yeah. says, oh. <laughs> I, you know, and, and I've always wondered, because uh, uh, in, in soccer, uh, unlike in, in, in what you might see in the pros or, or World Cup, there's more substituting during the game in, in high school. Is that correct? Yeah, and I'm a lot different than most coaches. I will always take fresh legs. Okay. So there would be many games where we'd play a team that might sub one time. We sub 15, 20, 25 times a half. And... There was only probably two games where every player on our team didn't see minutes. Um, we just, I told these guys when we started, we're just going to keep coming, we're going to keep coming, and we're going to run people off the field. And that was our goal, you know, just to keep bringing fresh legs out and, and, and just push them to make mistakes. Yeah, and that kind of relentless style. And, and, it, and I think it plays well in high school, too, because, again, you get to play a lot of people. Right. And that, that's good. Right. So this year, what was your uh, proudest moment this year, Emma? Um... Winning against Clio was my proudest moment because I really thought they were going to be really good, which they were, but I was really proud of our team for coming through on that. What about you, Arianne? Um, I'd have to agree with Emma because we, we were district champs last year, and that felt really good, but two years in a row, that hasn't happened before in St. Clair history, so that was awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks, girls. Nice Thank job. You. <laughs> So, Coach, um, great season this year, uh, a lot to build on with second place in the league and a district championship. What are some of your goals for next year? Next year, uh, we're going to be really young. Um, one of our goals is to compete in the blue. 
Uh, we lost nine seniors this wow. year. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be young. We'll be very talented. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident we'll be able to compete in the blue, though. Um, we, that's where we belong, all those teams. I think we can play with all of them. Uh, we're, we're hoping to compete for a league title, okay. win another district for the first time, go, go three times in a row. Uh, we have high expectations. Our goal is to build this program and win a regional title here real soon. Oh, excellent. Again, girls, thank you very much. And Cliff, good seeing you again, and thanks for coming in. That's it for Prex Box today. John Carr saying goodbye, and see you next week. <laughs>